Uh, hi everyone, um, I'm Tim Flink. Um, I uh, am a quality engineer at uh, Red Hat, and I'm going to be talking about uh, test cases, um, the uh, initiative called the Upstream First Initiative, um, and a lot of this is meant to be Q&A, so the presentation itself is going to be relatively short, um, and the idea is to save most of the time at the end for questions. So the things that uh, I'm specifically looking to talk about today is, you know, a bit of a discussion of where we are now. Um, what is this upstream first thing that um, I'm talking about? And as I just said, uh, leave some time at the end for questions. So, you know, I tend to start presentations like this, but, um, you know, it's a valid question. Where are we? Um, for... Uh, about as long as I can think uh, I can think of. Um, Red Hat does a lot of testing and has a lot of automated test cases for RHEL um, that aren't in Fedora. Um, and these test cases haven't been released. Um, sometimes they don't. Or they use tool sets that uh, aren't really part of Fedora. But there is a um, lot of that testing that happens um, as part of getting um, RHEL out the door and making RHEL into the thing that uh, Red Hat's customers buy. So, you know, that being said, what exactly is this upstream first thing that I'm talking about? So, there, I mean, the long, the, the short way to put it is there is a um, renewed, or there's a new interest and a push to get a subset of the test cases, in particular the automated test cases that we have for RHEL um, upstream into Fedora. Um, the focus is, uh, I mean, it's not all the test cases, um, but the lower level things, the package, things on the package level, um, functionality, um, some of the integration tests. Um, but the idea is to have those uh, test cases uh, moved upstream um, in this instance, or in this case, to Fedora, um, and end up with tests that work in both places. As far as you know, motivation, uh, I think I would hope this is somewhat uh, obvious. But you know, the the earlier that bugs gets the bugs get fixed, um, the cheaper it is. So from, you know, the what does Red Hat get out of this is, you know, testing being run, you know, further upstream. So it's not, you know, RHEL is branched. All of a sudden we found this bug that could have been fixed, you know, two years ago. Um, and then you have to go through the process of, you know, writing the patch, submitting it upstream, rebasing that patch to the version that you had, um, and then getting that out through the, the RHEL release process. Um, it benefits Red Hat to get those things done, uh, or to get those things found upstream, um, and at the same time, it benefits Fedora because we then get more test cases, there's more testing uh, being done um, with the idea of improving the quality of what we have as Fedora. So um, both parties in this case, it, it seems like a win-win. Um, I would assert it is a win-win um, for both sides. But I do want to say that this is not um, Red Hat forcing test cases on Fedora. Um, the the final say, I mean, it's it's still a community distribution. This is not Red Hat coming in and saying you will do all of these things. Um, so that the, the negotiation of what tests in what form that end up in Diskit. Um, in a lot of these cases is still up to the individual package maintainers. So, you know, just as a quick summary, uh, new, new test cases are coming. Um, a few of them have started to show up. We have um, a somewhat temporary Pagger instance, um, and some of the test cases are from inside Red Hat are landing there, uh, and eventually the uh, destination of those is going to be within Diskit. So um, if you are a maintainer, you will likely be seeing uh, pull requests and conversations started uh, in the very near future about getting test cases moved into Diskit, and that's where this is coming from. Um, and uh, both 
uh, it, I mean, it's a win-win. Fedora gets better testing, or it gets more testing, um, and Red Hat gets uh, stuff to fix uh, quicker. So as this is a Q&A session, uh, does, are there any questions? Ian? How, how many tests are we talking about? Um, the, I don't know the number of tests. Uh, the initial focus is uh, around the Atomic Host CI initiative. So the focus is having, the minimum that we have is we want to have one test case for every package that makes up the atomic host. Um, there will be more than that coming, but that is the, the shorter term um, uh, definitive thing that's been set. Oh, I my question is basically similar, but I just want to see an example of test case. Some examples of the test cases we want to move to from internal to Fedora. Um, okay, so the question that I forgot to and I forgot to repeat the first one. Um, the question was if I can give some examples of the test cases that um, we want to move from RHEL to Fedora. Um, I can point you to where those are. Those are, but to be honest, I'm doing more of the facilitation than the actual um, moving of test cases. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can. Probably should have planned to have a browser window. Um, oh, this is going to be fun. Now I got to. No, no, there is no stand. I can't do that. Tim, Tim comes from a stand-up comedy background. I don't know if you know that. So they like, they like to have to I believe it. Are you trying to tell me my whole presentation is a joke? I'm not going to do this. Nobody uses this network thing. <laughs> so this is the, the Pegger instance that we have. Um, and this is going to be where things are landing. The, we have repositories that line up with um, the packages that they are associated with. So I'm just going to go down to one of the ones that I know was First, if I can find it. So there's a test case associated with every repository on this? Um, that is the eventual hope. I mean, I imagine that the repositories are, um, I'm sorry, the question was if there's a test case associated with every repository. Um, that is the hope eventually. Um, I imagine that the process is people create the repository and then end up moving stuff to it. Um, so, for example, this is gzip, um, and they have a simple test. I think this may have been one of the examples. Um, so that these are all using the um, standard test rules, um, and the aim is to have these work these running in CI um, as that system matures and as it uh, increases in scope. Mike. So you said that it would be up to the maintainers about whether they accept tests or not that are submitted. So is that process going to go through Hagger? Is it going to be a full request process? Uh, the question was um, asking about for, for clarification on what I had said about um, the maintainers having the final say on whether the test cases were accepted and what that process was going to look like. Um, I, to be honest, I think it's going to depend on the situation. Because there's going to be packages where the testers already know the um, packagers, and that may be easier for them to just 
know, submit patches, but I imagine a lot of it's going to be via pull request. Because um, that's the sanest thing I can think of. Um, so that is how I imagine things are going to work, yes. So would these be pull requests on the source.proproject.org tagger instance, and how does that relate to this? Having two of these is very confusing to me. Um, the question was where those pull requests would be um, and whether the those would end up being on source.proproject.org. Um, the upstream first instance is meant as a staging area. So just because, uh, I mean, this is a place we needed to start somewhere. Um, a lot of the test cases were not in a state that, you know, if they submitted a pull request at that time, it, they would have been rejected because they weren't ready. Um, so the reason that we stood up a second pegger instance is uh, because um, people are familiar with the interface. We had the, the resource, it was easy to set up for us. And in the case that something gets pushed upstream that is not supposed to be pushed upstream, we can delete repositories. Um, I'm, I mean, th these are meant to be temporary. We can delete stuff. Um, I do not and I will not go mucking around in the bowels of the disket repositories. That I'm not doing. This I can, I can mess with. So the workflow will be pull requests, uh, uh, the people submitting tests will create forks in source.pegger and then pull this in and then create a PR from there or something else. And yeah, the, the, the question was, do I need to know about this? Uh, the question was, as a packager, do, do you need to know about this instance? And uh, in general, no. Um, there, we're still trying to figure out or I'm trying to put together a way to run these tests automatically so that you know it isn't just, hey, here's a pull request. You should trust these tests are doing something interesting. Well, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, and it will help you. Um, the, but to get them running in a way that uh, you know someone can make the fork um, in the diskit pegger instance, um, add the tests, um, do the pull request, and say, hey, you know, here are these tests. Here is the logs of them running against the last build of you know, whatever package we're talking about. Um, here are the results, here's what things are, you know, going to be doing. Um, so you may see it, uh, this particular, the this instance of Pegger, but it is going to be more, or it's the, the people porting test cases are going to be using it directly. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh. No, someone else can come back to me. <laughs> In the context of that question, how does this, interact with arbitrary branches? Uh, the question was, um, in the context of all of those, uh, uh, or in, in the context of um, how this process is going to work, how does it intersect with arbitrary branches? Um, and I'm going to say it doesn't really. Um, the We don't have enforced branching, like I don't, like any of these, if people have branches for F27, F26, that kind of stuff, they admit it on their own. Um, the that is something that will need to be dealt with on a package by package basis. Um, which I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's I don't know of a way. It, it, am I answering your question, or am I not understanding what you're asking? Well, so the prototypical example is like HTTP two four and two six, right? Mm -hmm. And have their own branches that would follow upstream. Mm -hmm. But so if I if I have a two four branch and I request 2.6, does it inherit the tests from the 2.4 branch, or do you start from scratch and have to move things over? Like, um, it, There's not a, a logical like um, branching structure of the way it's like we have the F25.627. Like, mm -hmm. um, so then the, this was, it was clarification on uh, trying to figure out uh, how this is going to play with the arbitrary branching that is going, coming for F28, isn't it? Or is it 27? It's um, rawhide it's now that 27 is branched, yeah. is the idea where it's going to land. Um, but, uh, you know, how does the, you know, the inheritance work? Inheritance work if you have, um, you know, Apache or a HTTPD uh, 2.4 and 2.6, when you create the 2.6 branch, does the, do the test cases inherit um, and those kind of things. Am I restating yeah. your question correctly? Okay. Um, and I, I can see this. I want to answer two different questions. Um, the first is that the this particular Pagger instance, 
um, doesn't care about arbitrary branching. That's not what it's for. This is not going to be around all that long. Um, that's famous last words, I know. Uh, but um, that the the, te the idea right now is to have the test cases in Diskit so that they live alongside. Uh, I mean, the the, I the thing that's commonly said is we want the test cases to live alongside the code, and whether you consider spec files to be code or not. I, in this particular case, I definitely do. Um, so, um, however the branching is set up and however that is done on a package per package basis is going to affect how the test cases work between them. Um, am I answering your question? I Hopefully not just throwing words out. I think we need to think through some details there. Yep. I, I, there, there are details that need to be thought through. I am, and I figure it's going to be one of those we just because things make sense now, I'm sure change is inevitable um, and an eventuality. So, as a baseline assumption, I think there you will have the option to have different test directories for dramatically different arbitrary branches, right? That's, yes. that's going to help as to whether it makes sense to, when you cut a new one, immediately inherit the old test or not. I don't know. It happens because you can't have. Well, I mean, if you. If Python you do seven test cases, are not going to be the same as the Python three. Right, but then yeah, the is there a process for Python populating that test directory? Yeah, like where you get, you know, there's there's some some logistics there. Well, I mean, it's uh, the the branches are still going to happen in Git, no? Yeah. yeah. So you're so those, I mean, when you do a branch in Git, that stuff's all going to be there at the time you create it. So there's a certain so regardless of whether that's what we right, want, right. when you initially create that branch within the Git repository, those tests are all going to be there. Um, or am I misunderstanding? We, we okay. Need to talk about that one. All right. So I have a request rather than a question. Um, I like numbers for things, mm -hmm. so it would be really helpful for me to have like a weekly or monthly count of number of tests opened, uh, like made public and be open. Uh, how many pull requests are accepted from them? How many pull requests are just sitting there not accepted, and maybe um, somebody could take action on those? Uh, and then how many tests get in or are created without pull requests? I'm just kind of being able to track those different things so that I can sort of see how well this is progressing. Because um, it seems it's a pretty exciting project, and it's something to be nice to show off with. Yep. Look and I was one thing I was hoping to have the ready for. Oh, the question was, you know, he likes he. Matt wants to have you know numbers and graphs and a, a show of status, or the status in the sense of how far along we are. And um, I would like to know, like, you know, if we're having a lot of developers who are just not accepting the PRs, like how we can, um, I want um, to see that bubble up as an issue and work on it, or maybe okay. it won't be an issue at all. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, and so he's talking about tracking the processes. Um, to be honest, I still haven't figured out how to track that part of it. Um, if anyone has ideas, I am very much I very much willing to listen. Um, this does not work quite yet. I'm still running into some deployment problems that I was hoping to have fixed by this morning, but they're not. Um, this is a basically this tracks um, you know how many repositories are there, uses some, some heuristics to figure out you know do they have test cases, do they not have test cases, are these test cases moved? Um, and uh, when it's working, it will then have a list of the, the things that are there um, and of the packages we are tracking right now, what percentage of them um, have test cases in the upstream first forge um, uh, versus, yeah, don't have anything. If you can make this save its state every day, so that helps with the charting. Um, we can try. Uh, I think. We'll see. This this was ha this is uh, the guy who wrote this is no longer around, um, so uh, I need I haven't gotten that far into the code yet. Um, but I think one of the thoughts because we've been asked uh, to make it send emails at various points, so yeah, that, um, that would be fine. I can about the emails. Okay. Yeah, we can talk afterwards on you know what's going to be the most helpful to. Um, to be tracking, but in all seriousness, if someone has an idea of how we can track the process of getting test cases into Diskit, I 
I don't have any good ideas. So I am I would love to hear them. Uh, is that initiative uh, uh, focused on a on a test uh, or on a, for a CI for a packages uh, after they are built or also for a, for a compose testing? For a qualification of composers that uh, uh, put all tests together and uh, run it on on a fresh nightly build. Uh, the question was whether the focus was on um, <coughs> the package. I'm or and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the question was whether the emphasis is on uh, stuff that is specific to packages or whether we're including things that are more for the qualification of composers. Um, and things that are on a less granular level than packages. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for now, uh, the focus is very much packages. Um, it's one of those things where it could be very large, um, and we just want to get started at least somewhere, and this is the easiest thing for us to wrap our heads around. Um, and then I imagine that's that can be a discussion to be had at a, a later date. You know whether you know more composed level things are going to move as well. But for now, the focus is definitely package specific. This. So uh, yeah, <coughs> so thanks for this talk first of all. And you said that this will be part of a larger CI uh, process. Mm -hmm. So to be a part of that CI process, do we have any guideline for the for people who are preparing a test cases? That the one which you showed goes very in the YML. So, any guidelines for that? Uh, the question was um, about the CI initiative that I mentioned and whether there um, are any guidelines about how to write things for that system. Correct? Yeah, perfect. Um, yes. Um, from the, the CI page in the Fedora Wiki. Um, there, I'm trying to find the, the exact, they talk about the format, um, they talk about, within this you'll find links um, where they talk about the format, they'll talk about um, what the, the various responsibilities are and what you can expect um, as someone who's writing tests for that system. That's your question? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much for uh, coming, and uh, that is going to be it.